Everybody praise the Lord. Jesus will be your joy. Jesus will be your emancipator. And Jesus will be your savior. He will be your upholder. He will uphold you. And Jesus will be the sufficiency of your life, even tonight in Jesus' name. J for joy. E for emancipator. S for savior. U for upholder. And S, your sufficiency. All your problems tonight, they rolled away in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I'm asking Lord tonight that you will touch everyone. Save everyone. Heal everyone. Deliver everyone. Set every captive free. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Tonight, we're coming to talk together and then to demonstrate the power of the Lord in your life tonight. In Jesus' name. I'm talking to you tonight on the trusted performance of a great promise keeper. The Lord has given us the promise, the promise to save, the promise to heal, the promise to deliver, and the promise to remove every mountain in your life. I want to announce to you that God is a promise keeper. And tonight, he has a performance, a performance in your life. The performance we can trust. The performance we can lean on. The performance we can depend upon. The trusted performance of a great promise keeper. Look at Numbers chapter 23 verse 19. It says, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he shall repent. As he said, and shall he not do it? As he spoke in, and shall he not make it good? Everything the Lord has spoken. And everything you will hear tonight about your salvation, about your healing, about your deliverance, about the removing of your mountain, about the solution to every problem of your life, as he spoke in, and shall he not do it? As he said, and shall it not make it good? It'll make it good in your life. Yeah. Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 12. In Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. Then said the Lord unto me. Unto me. Unto you. He said thou hast seen well. I will hasten my word to perform it. You didn't say amen to that one. The word of the Lord. Because he is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Because he says, I am God, I change not. He will hasten his word. A performance will come to your life tonight in Jesus' name. Three things we're looking at in the message today. Number one is the confession of honest seekers. Now, we must be honest. You know, when you come to a doctor, and the doctor says, before I even carry out the check-in, what, what's the problem? And then you don't want to tell him the right thing. What did you come to the doctor if you didn't want to tell him the right thing? Tell him exactly where you ache, 
where your pain is, he's going to test you anyway. He's going to check up himself and he's going to de discover the truth. But you, as a seeker, you will be honest. The confession of honest seekers. Number two, the conversion of humble sinners. The confession of humble sinners. You understand? Sinners, human beings, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. What do we have to be proud of? Can I say, God, I want you to save me, but I want to tell you, God, I am a thief. I'm proud of it. People cannot tell how I move. I go here, I go there. Before they discover I'm so clever, I steal. You can't be proud of that. Even before human beings, you can't say, I'm so clever that anyone, you know, I'm wicked and I can ill treat or press anyone, no matter who, I am so clever that I can hurt anyone. We cannot be proud of our sins. The only thing we can do as we come to the Lord is that we confess in humility and there is the conversion of the humble sinners. I pray the cloth of humility, you'll put it on tonight in Jesus' name. Number three is the confirmation of the healing scriptures. The scripture heals. The word heals. It sent his word and healed them and delivered them from all their afflictions. And when you, as you come tonight, there is healing for every sickness in your body. Yeah. Blind eyes will be healed. Yeah. The deaf and the dumb will be healed. The lame, the paralyzed will be healed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Cancer will vanish away. There will be a confirmation of the healing scriptures. Quickly, number one. Number one is the confession of honest seekers. We're looking at Psalm 32. I'm reading from verse 1. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. The Lord will forgive your sin tonight. It will cover all that sin from his sight. He'll blot them away. You'll never see them again. Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, Blessed is the man. Blessed is the woman. Blessed is the individual unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity. And in whose spirit there is no girl. He removed girl evil, deception, lying away from your inner man, from your spirit, in Jesus' name. Now you know, girl means deception. Where does, which, in which kitchen does the person cook deception before he serves it to everybody? You know, there are people that cook deception. They cook lies. And they cook dishonesty. And they cook it in that kitchen where in their spirit, in their mind, in their heart. And when they cook it in their heart, then they roll it out and give it to people. Tonight, the Lord will change that kitchen. It'll change your spirit. it change your heart. That deception, guile, will not come again in Jesus' name. Look at verse 3. In verse 3, it tells us, When I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. And then in verse 4, it says in verse 4, For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the, into the drought of summer. And then in verse 5, it says, I acknowledge my sin. I confess my sin. I proclaim 
before the Lord. In the presence of the Lord, it says, I, I confess, I acknowledge my sin unto thee. My iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. And when you confess unto the Lord, the Lord will forgive you. Amen. The Lord will blot out all the transgression. And the Lord will take away the punishment of the sin that you would have suffered because you confess unto the Lord and all those transgressions will be forgiven because it says, and thou forgivest the iniquity of my sin. Amen? Amen. In Proverbs chapter 28, I'm reading from verse 13. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. He that covereth the sins shall not prosper. Do you understand that? It means somebody has done evil. And there is a policeman living inside of everyone. That policeman is called conscience. And normally, when you put a policeman inside the room and you cover him and you lock up and the window is not open the door is not open and you put that policeman inside there there'll be discomfort he'll be wondering what's happening he wants to open the door that pressure may come in he wants to open the window that pressure may come in he cannot then it will disturb you from the inside. You understand? The conscience is the policeman. And the conscience is inside there. And you cover him up. He that covereth his sins. The conscience will be shouting. The conscience will be screaming. The conscience will be saying, Hey, I'm feeling the guilt. I'm feeling the condemnation. I'm feeling the heat of everything that you have done. Open the door. Open the window. That's why it says, But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Mercy has come. Mercy has come. And mercy will find you. Mercy will find him. Mercy will find her because you open the door, you open your mouth, and you tell the Lord, here is who I am, here is what I'm, I've been doing, and then you say, I will not continue in them anymore, the Lord will forgive you tonight. A person who is sincere, a person who is honest, a person who says, that's what I've been doing. That's my life. I'm guilty. I'm condemned. And I have all the weakness inside me. I feel the discomfort of the policeman inside me. I feel that discomfort of the conscience inside me. Lord, I am sorry. Mercy, salvation will come to you. Where are you there? Mercy has come. Forgiveness has come. Salvation has come. And the power to live a life in freedom has come to you tonight in Jesus' name. Number two here, I come to number two, and it's the confession of the conversion of humble sinners. The conversion of humble sinners. We're looking at Psalm 51, and I'm reading from verse 12. In verse 12, it says, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Now, David, what's your position in the land? said, I'm king in the land. 
what kind of prayer did you pray unto God? He said, I prayed, I told God, I have sinned against you and against heaven. Then after you made the prayer, did you hide it somewhere since you are a king so that nobody will hear? He said, no. How can me, even though I'm a king, a sinner, be proud? I publicized it. I said it in the open. That's a humble king. That's a humble monarch. That's a humble leader. That's a humble personality. You see, that's why God forgives us. He says, if we were not ashamed to sin, we should not be ashamed to confess. Yes, we knew that we're at this position. If we're going to be so proud, we don't want anybody to hear, then you should be so dignified, you don't do it. Whatever you are not willing that other people should hear, you must not do. And so the king said, I'm asking for forgiveness. I have to be humble. I'm asking for salvation. I have to be humble. And he says, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. And then he said in verse 13, in verse 13 he said, then will I teach transgressors I have been a transgressor. I felt the guilt. I felt the shame. I felt the oppressing power. And now I have salvation and the peace and the joy and the victory of salvation. And I'm going to tell every sinner, this is how I got it. I was humble. I was lowly. And I confess before the Lord, and the Lord saw the sincerity of my confession. And the Lord saw the sincerity and the honesty and the humility, and he forgave me. So I'm going to tell all the sinners, then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. And sinners shall be converted unto thee, and tonight conversion. Tonight, change of life. Tonight, change of character. Tonight, change of the inner man. That as you come humbly before the Lord, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then it says he will hear from heaven. He will hear your prayer. It will forgive you. It will give you a new life. And the things you used to do, the power to resist the temptation and the urge to do them, the Lord will set you totally free. Are you there? The Lord will do it for you. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. In Acts chapter 3, reading from verse 19, repent ye therefore and be converted. Repent. I don't know how to repent. Of course you know. It says, now how does somebody repent? You're going on a road and then you are informed that there is fire burning, there is rioting, there is evil and there is pandemonium on that road. And if you move forward, you're going to be smashed and crushed. What do you do? With that knowledge, with that understanding, and you know, going forward, going on, is dangerous for your life. You turn and you go now another way. That's the repentance the Lord is talking about. The path of the transgressor is hard. And the end of transgression is eternal punishment. And because you have that conviction, and you are sure that there is no two ways about it, that 
if I continue on this road, danger at the end, punishment at the end, fire, hell fire at the end. That knowledge, that understanding makes you to say, I don't want to get at that outcome eternally in my life. And so you turn. The things I used to do, I do them no more. That's repentance. The places I used to go, I go there no more. That's repentance. And the evil things I used to perpetrate, I perpetrate them no more. That's the repentance. You'll, you'll do it tonight. Amen. Repent ye therefore and be converted. As people look at you, they say, look at this man. He's changed. He's turned around. He's converted. A new life has come. You'll be the carrier of the new life. I want to know the person I'm talking to there. Am I talking to you? God will bless you. God will change your life. God will bring blessing, eternal blessing in your life in Jesus' name. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Blotted out. I'm sure you've used an eraser before. And uh, you know, those of us in the old school, we've used a meal team before. And um, you know, those who are typing, I'm, used, I'm sure you have uh, used that correcting a uh, liquid before. And you blotted everything out. But when you do it because you are a man, uh, we can see that something was written there before, which you have tried to clear. When God takes the eraser of heaven, and then he blots out, he cleanses up. And it removes all your transgression, all your guilt, every evil thing you've done before. Even if an angel tries to look, they will not see anything. Heaven will look, they'll not see anything. Earth will look, they'll not see anything. Your slate will be cleaner and clear. I said your slate, my slate, my slate will be cleaner and clear. Tonight is your night. That it will blot out all your sins. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Repentance, refreshing. You repent, you turn, and then the time of refreshing will come unto you. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, unto you first, God, having raised up his son, Jesus sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from your iniquity. In turning away, the Lord will turn you. You know, sometimes somebody is so sick, is lying down, and the doctor, the nurse wants to treat him, and they want to treat him on the side that is not turning right, and he cannot turn himself, and then the doctor, the nurse will turn him. God will turn you. The almighty hand of God will turn you. And then all the wounds of your sin, all the wounds of your pain, the Lord will treat you. You'll be perfectly made whole. God is interested in your life. And he's going to do that for your life, even today, in Jesus' name. Unto you first, God have been raised up a son Jesus, sent him to bless you. Tonight, he will bless you. Bless you with salvation. Bless you with healing. Bless you with deliverance. Bless you with the joy of the Lord. And bless you with miracle in your life in Jesus' name. And then he turns you away from 
your iniquity. I come to point number three here. Number three, the confirmation of healing scriptures. The scriptures are given to us and there is going to be a confirmation. You've heard testimonies already, what God has done in the lives of other people. And who will be the next? I said who will be the next? The next to receive healing. The next to receive deliverance. And the next to have every yoke of your life broken. Tonight is tonight in Jesus' name. Now, we've had testimonies. And can I give you testimony? Is that all right? Because I want you to hear number one. Number two, and then you come on the line. Number three. Tonight, all the testimonies you have heard from the beginning of the service. And the one you are going to hear now, the Lord will reproduce in your life, in your body, in Jesus' name. Number one. There's uh, this uh, young man, Daniel, actually a child, that was healed. Let, let, let the story come to you directly. Daniel or the parents, you know, give us the testimony because somebody is waiting to be the next on the line. We went to the hospital. Doctor told me that there is nothing we can use apart we go for surgery. I thank God for this, my son. Which his name is Daniel. My name is Mrs. Somerson Yatemitokwe. I give God the glory and honor. I worship him. I adore him. Daniel has a serious problem concerning his private parts. He's normally swell up. So we have used so many things, abas, drugs. We went to the hospital to do some tests and scan. So after that, doctor told me that there is nothing we can use apart we go for surgery. So during that time, I came back home, explained and discussed with my husband. He said, there is no money for now, but we have to come back home. Ever since then, we continue believing in the Lord, praying. When our daddy in the Lord came to Ikorodu, so we decided to enter the program. He mentioned my son's case. I laid my hands on it. As we get home, I keep on washing. As I'm washing it, I keep on washing the place. I saw that the place has dried up. The water that is there dry up and the O oh, was closed. I return the glory back to the Lord because He's worthy of my praise. He's wonderful in my life. Praise the Lord. Amen. Who will be the next? The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. Now, there is, there is uh, you know, there is this Edith that arch, broken bone, Pays a long time, a number of years. Don't let me tell the story. Let her tell you the story. And then after you hear that story, come online. You will be the next. My name is Edith Preacher. 47 years ago, I had an accident and I was treated in the hospital. It, it, it was fracture. So I've been having this problem. After the treatment, I've been, I started working with my leg. But from time to time, I have problem with my leg. I feel uncomfortable, pains, excruciating pains. But at a time, I depend and believe God that it is possible with God and that, and that a time will come when I'll be relieved from the problem. So during the Jalingo crusade, on the second day of that Jalingo crusade, as the man of God was praying and said that we should raise up our hand, I raised up my hand and touched where I have the problem. And he prayed. He said, wherever that problem is in the body, leg, hand, wherever, I said, yes, that one of leg is mine. And I claimed the promise. And after the prayer, as I went home, I looked at the surface of the opening 
uh, place on my leg and I saw something whitish. I said, is this bone? I had to indeed use my fingernail and draw it out. This is the first bone that came out. Then after this first bone, 11 days to the next month crusade, I saw another bone coming out in different shape. This is the second bone. And since then, I've been freed. The, whatever the Lord cannot do does not exist. And whenever it is enough, it shall be enough. Praise the Lord! What God cannot do does not exist. Tonight, who is the next on the line? Healing. I said, who is the next on the line? Deliverance. I said, who is the next on the line? Total freedom. Who is the next on the line? Point number three, the confirmation of the healing scripture. Psalm 107, I'm reading from verse 20. In Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent his word and healed them. He's sending the word of power to you tonight. The word of healing to you tonight. And the word of deliverance to you tonight. He sent his word and healed them. Who will be healed tonight? It will happen. And delivered them from their destructions. Your deliverance has come. Remember, Jesus is the joy of your life. Jesus is the emancipator. And he will liberate you from every evil sin today in Jesus' name. And Jesus is your savior. Savior, savior, while you are saving others, do not pass me by. He has seen you. He has known you. He brought salvation from heaven and is going to give you tonight. And then Jesus is our upholder. He will uphold you. When you stagger and you are about to fall, the hand of Jesus will lift you up. When you are down, the hand of Jesus will lift you up. When it appears that your miracle is coming and then you are this way, a miracle that way, the hand of Jesus will bring you a miracle together. And Jesus is our sufficiency. Whatever you need from him tonight, Jesus will supply. Blessing supplied. Healing supplied, salvation supplied, freedom supplied unto you tonight in Jesus' name. Confirmation in your life. Confirmation in your family. Confirmation answers to your prayer tonight. Where are you? It's about and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. Salvation is here now. Forgiveness is here now. You turn away from your sin. You repent of your sin. And you call on the Lord. Salvation has come. It will give you the joy of salvation. The rest, restfulness in salvation. The peace in salvation. It's bowed and eyes closed. You want that salvation? Now you are standing on the line. Where are you? Raise up that hand. Quickly, quickly, quickly. On the right, at the left, in the front, at the center, at the back, online, anywhere you are, salvation has come to you tonight and it's coming straight to your heart. Raise up that hand. God bless you there. If you're raising up your hand, you will stand up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Stand up. Stand up for that salvation and for that forgiveness and for that change of life. 
I am the next on the line. I am the next on the line. Stand up then. I am the next on the line. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. I'm praying with you now. As you're standing up there, confess your sins unto the Lord. In a sentence, so cheer up everything together and say, Lord, I know I'm guilty of this, I'm guilty of that. I come for your mercy, and the mercy of the Lord will bring salvation unto you. Amen. <laughs> Keep up that hand. I'm praying for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you look at everyone here at the Alpha location, everyone in every congregation and everyone in every country all over the world. I pray according to your promise, there will be a performance of salvation. Save them in Jesus' name. Take their guilt away. Take their condemnation away. And Lord, I pray a new life will come to everyone now in Jesus' name. Confirmation in their lives. Salvation in their lives. And the peace of God is salvation in every heart, every soul in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Their names already are written in the book of life in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there. And they will give you the slips to fill. And then after that, very shortly now, I'll come back. Because I know you are waiting on the line. You will not go empty-handed. Your healing, uh, deliverance will come to you today. Counselor, thank you and God bless you. Counselors, please get up very quickly and spread yourself all around. No person should be left out. The Lord will grant you the grace to do it effectively and efficiently. Remember, the decision slip is very clear. You want to ask the person the decision he has taken. Either he decided for Christ or he decided to be seeking for restoration. The full name, and then you indicate whether male or female, and then whether it's a child or a youth. You tick which one is appropriate. If it's an adult, you tick the adult section. Then the address, the name, the, 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 the address where the person is living, the nearest bus stop. And then the telephone number, very, very important. Very, very important. 11 digits. And then you write it very clearly. If the uh, WhatsApp number is available, you should write the WhatsApp number or the telephone number or both. Then you also indicate the language best understood so that we can effectively... Uh, put the process of follow-up without any hindrance. The, if he has any email, you can quickly write it up. Then you indicate the denomination or the church or the religion. Then if it's a student, write the name of the school. If it uh, is an undergraduate, put the university there and the department. Then you put the class and the department there. These are the basic things in the decision slip, please, and write legibly. Preferably in capital letters. Make sure you do it effectively well. And then after you have done that, or if the person can write, allow him or her to write. But after writing, check out the information there. Make sure everything is correct before the person is, uh, before you leave it to another person. And then after you have fully completed it, you hand it over to the supervisor. Then for those online, if you are watching online and you have just given your life to Christ after the pastor's message this evening, visit the link showing the screen, uh, showing on the screen now, and fill the form so we can assist you further in your new walk with Christ. Also, if you are listening via the radio 
or television, and you just gave your life to Christ, send your name, your name, your full name, and your location address via SMS or through WhatsApp to this number. SMS or WhatsApp to this number, plus 234-9154-449263. Again, 234-9154-449263. Send it, you can take the information very quickly now so that we can further help you. Then remember that the Converse Rally will hold tomorrow, immediately after the, uh, after the service. Immediately after the service in the, in the classroom yonder there. Immediately after the Sunday service tomorrow. Then the, the, the other combat, the general Converse Rally and Banquet will take place on Sunday, 4th September. For all those who are watching online, the own banquet will come up 4th September, and the detail will be sent to you online. A pastor will be delighted to have you join this special banquet online. Thank you, and God bless you as you do so. On the Believer's Banquet on Sunday, 4th September 2022, at Deeper Life Church headquarters, Itonla, Ondo, and then in other region uh, headquarters. Time is 4 p.m., 4 p.m. You need to follow this information and follow it through. Counselors, you are doing a good job. Please do it very well and make sure you write very legibly and clearly. And if somebody is, and if the converse is writing by himself or herself, after, write, after completing it, check up the information and make sure the information are correct, especially the name. Not only one name, at least two names. The, the first name and the surname. And then the telephone number. Very, very essential. So that we can be sure we'll be able to get back to uh, these precious souls who have given their life unto Christ. Remember, salvation is the greatest miracle. And that's what connects you with God. That's what makes you a child of God. That's why you don't joke with it. So if you have surrendered tonight, make sure your, uh, the information about you is collected. You give, you give it wholeheartedly. Don't give anything that will not be, that we are, we are not going to, uh, that's not going to be useful to us. You are born again now, you will not tell lies. I know that. You should not, you should not deceive us at all. Give your correct name, uh, your telephone number, your address, and then those things are very, very essential. The Lord will bless you. Tonight is a wonderful night. You can see the mercy of God over us on this ground. Tonight, the Lord will do wonders in your life. I say the Lord will do wonders in your life. His promises of healing and deliverance will surely come to pass tonight. And I'm assuring you, God will not disappoint you. The name of Jesus has been working miracles, signs and wonder. He has never failed one day. When his own anointed servant and minister pray, he answers immediately. Tonight, get ready to receive your miracle. Already the pastor has asked you, who is going to be the next? And you say, you are. So get ready. Get ready. There will be a confirmation tonight after the prayer of the man of God. Counselors, please do, uh, do what you are doing now and ensure you give us a very good uh, uh, information on those decision slips. And uh, if you have finished your, uh, your own side of, the, of the, uh, the, the counseling and the data collection, you please let the supervisors uh, raise the white flag on my right hand side, in the center here, on my left hand side, I'm far back, so I will know you are finished. But those of you who are not con uh, concerned with this uh, exercise, and you are waiting for your miracle, begin to begin to tell God tonight. I told you, believe, and you will receive. You just believe, 
what the, what the, uh, the prayer of the man of God, immediately you are healed. So be, get ready. Get tonight. There will be shouting tonight. Shouting of miracle. Shouting of what God will do right away. There will be shouting tonight. The shout of joy. The shout of rejoicing what the Lord will do tonight. Get ready. Counselors who are waiting for you. I'm, I'm looking ahead to see whether I will see the flag there on my right hand side, on the center here, or on the left hand side. I'm far by my left, and as well as the back, at the back side. Do it effectively. Don't leave any information out so that what you, what you have given to what you have filled will be useful to us. Don't forget tomorrow. We are going to have a global combined worship service. Throughout the whole world, deep and live worldwide, we have a combined global worship tomorrow morning at Alpha location here and in all deep and live churches worldwide. Here tomorrow morning, 7.30, you are here. And I'm assuring you, God will, be, God will surprise us. He will give us a good weather. The mercy of God will perform that. So, quickly wake up in the morning, dress up, and be here. Remember the special converse meeting for all those who have given their, their life to Jesus during this uh, uh, global crusade. Tomorrow, at the, uh, after the Sunday service, at the classroom yonder there, those classes that are painted in blue color, you, you report there, and then you'll be attended to. Immediately after the worship service, you go there very quickly. Something good is waiting for you there. Counselors, I have not seen any flag. If you have finished your own side there, raise up the flag, let me see, to indicate you have concluded the job. In the middle here, at my left-hand side, I'm far left there, and then behind, at the... At the uh, uh, Yoruba section and other languages there, make sure you cover everywhere. Supervisors are waiting to see the flag so that the man of God can come and bring, back the, and bring down the power of God. I've not seen any, any, any flag at all. Raise it up very well so I can see it. Okay, I can see here at the center. God bless you. I see the flag at the center here. Yes, yeah, thank you at the, at, the, uh, at the center right there. Okay, God bless you. How about the... Ex okay, thank you very much. How about the back side? Far back side. I, I want to see the flag there that the job there is concluded. Far, uh, far back. I've seen, the, I've seen the right hand side. I've seen the two flags there. The far back center... And the left hand side, okay, thank you very much. God bless you. Any other session here to finish? Finish up and raise up the flag because the pastor is ready. It's loaded tonight. The power of God will come down. And I told you there will be shouting tonight. There will be, happy, there will be jubilation tonight. There will be power encounter tonight. Those sicknesses, you see them no more. Are we ready now? God bless you. The man of God will be coming now. And I can assure you tonight is a night of joy and jubilation because God will do it. Amen. Anybody on the line? Who is the next to receive miracle? Really, really, real miracle. I said, who is the next? It will happen. Amen. The confirmation of the healing scriptures in your life. Amen. He sent his word and healed them on the right, the left, at the center, at the back, online, everywhere. The word of healing is coming to you now. Raise up that hand.
displayed the other hand where you have the challenge, the Lord will perform the needed miracle in your life tonight. Yeah. Father, in Jesus' name, we know that name will never be denied. And whatsoever we ask in that name, you will do it. Therefore, Lord, I pray for every sick person here today, oppressed person here today, and online, stretch forth your healing hand. Heal them in Jesus' name. Insanity, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Mental problem, mental disorder, evil spirit or mention any life there the irresistible command in the name of christ comes to you now come out in jesus name any swelling in the body fibroid goiter hunchback elephantiasis swollen and peach lord i pray touch them Heal them. Remove the swelling in Jesus' name. Blind eyes. Dim eyes. Glaucoma. Whatever. Be removed in Jesus' name. Receive your bright eyesight. I pray for those who are deaf and dumb. And Lord, I pray that you open those deaf ears. Amen. Loose the dumb, tied tongues. Amen. And Lord, I pray the miracle of hearing, Amen. the miracle of speaking, Amen. give to them in Jesus' name. Amen. Everything that appears to be an incurable disease, cancer, you are healed now in Jesus' name. Also healed now in Jesus' name. Tuberculosis healed in Jesus' name. HIV AIDS healed in Jesus' name. A near respiratory problem, lungs problem, be healed in Jesus' name. With that hands, be refreshed, be renewed, be restored, stretch out that with that hand be made whole in Jesus' name. Stroke, one side paralyzed, hand, leg, Lord, I pray that renewed strength yeah. energy yeah. power yeah. healing yeah. will come to that side that everything will be as stronger as the other side do it in jesus name broken bones be joined together strength in that leg strength in that hand Lord, I pray you mend every broken bone in everyone in the body in Jesus' name. That short hand grow out right now. Short leg grow out right now. Lord, confirmation in Jesus' name. Those who are lame, paralyzed, they can't walk down the wheelchair, they're on the march, lying down. Lord, I pray your power now at this time will get to everyone. And Lord, your power will raise them up in Jesus' name. Every form of miracle, do it now. Mountains, get out of the way. Unbelief, get out of the way. Amen. Confirmation. Amen. On the right. Amen. At the left. 
in the front, Amen. at the back, Amen. online, Amen. over the television, Amen. over the radio, Amen. confirmation of miracles. Confirmation of miracles. Confirmation of miracles. This will be a night of joy for all your people. Confirm it, Lord. Confirm it, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. It's there you've got it. Check up yourself. Your miracle is there. 